I've always been interested in playing rock and roll songs on the ukulele. Uh, even before I got my solid body electric ukulele made by Flight Ukuleles. The instrument, just ukulele in general, is so versatile. Uh, and uh, you can play whatever you want on the thing. Um, I've been playing tunes like Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good um, and some Nine Inch Nails songs and, and all sorts of different rock tunes on the ukulele for a long time, as well as writing my own rock music uh, on, on ukulele. Um, you can find songbooks uh, for uh, Queen and ACDC, so I'm not even close to the first person who's, who's done this. This instrument in particular has inspired me to play some really big rock riffs. So much so that I started a little series on YouTube uh, called Wednesday Licks, right here on the Tiny Village Music page. And in this video, I'll be walking you through the first three licks uh, that I uh, put together for the series. So uh, I've got The Ocean by Led Zeppelin, Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix, and Cruel by St. Vincent. I am having a blast making these, uh, so if there's a, a particular lick that you would like to request, email me at tinyvillagemusic at gmail.com. So I've got this, and I'm going to be doing my demonstrations on, on this fella here. But you can play all of these riffs with an acoustic instrument as well, so don't worry if you don't have one that looks like that. I've put my acoustic instruments, uh, especially this one here, um, through lots of rock heck. Uh, so it can, it can handle the job, uh, but there are certain things that uh, uh, the solid body uh, is just a little bit better at handling. Stuff like um, uh, when I'm putting all sorts of distortion effects through it, um, with acoustic instruments you can get a bit more feedback going on. There's also a particular sound that you get from uh, the uh, nylon strings versus the steel strings of an electric instrument like that. So those uh, have an impact on the sound and uh, the uh, playability of, of all of these things. Um, but again, my point being, uh, you can still play uh, Led Zeppelin here. Uh, now, uh, you did notice that that note right there might have sounded a little bit off if you're familiar with the tune. Um, that is because this is a high G ukulele uh, that I've got right here. Um, this uh, re-entrant tuning where my open G string sounds the same as the third fret of my E string. And I can play it. It's going to sound pretty much like the song, right? Like, you can still recognize it as... But um, that, that high G is the right note, but not the right octave. So again, don't worry uh, if you, you, can, you can still play it and you can still make it sound cool um, on an instrument like this, but with a low G, we're just going to get a more accurate sound. So far, all of the uh, riffs that I've done are uh, in the original key. So when you play them on the ukulele, you can play right along with the original recordings and uh, they, will, they will line up in terms of pitch. I'm sure there's going to be a point where I'm going to want to uh, work out some riffs that I can't do in the original key on this instrument um, for, for one reason or another, but not yet. That's plenty of forward. Let's get to the licks. There are a couple techniques in there that I'm using that I want to highlight, uh, the first one being the hammer-on. So when I do a hammer-on, essentially what I'm doing is I'm playing a particular note, and then I'm producing that second note by hammering one of my fingers down onto the fret that, that, I, that I would like. So I'm starting on the third fret of my E string here, I pluck that, and then I don't pluck to get that fifth fret of the E string. I'm getting that sound by just uh, hitting it 
uh, nice and firmly with my ring finger. And we get that kind of interesting sound. So we can hear the third fret, but that's really only to get us to the fifth fret here. And this is one of the techniques that uh, we hear a lot in rock music that is really easy to accomplish with an electric instrument like this. We can still absolutely do it all day long on an acoustic instrument. Uh, with a little bit of distortion, um, we can uh, make it sound uh, really neat and really rocky. And then I'm gonna pluck through these other notes. And when I hit the fifth fret of my G string, I'm going to do another technique called a slide. Now I'm not sliding anywhere in particular. I'm vaguely aiming for the second fret of my G string, but I'm probably gonna be like trailing off before I even actually hit that note. I don't wanna stop on that note. I just want the effect of this slide sound. And when it's quick, we just get that, that neat kind of almost effect more than a note. One of the other things that makes this uh, piece a little bit unique is that we have a weird time signature. So we, the first half of this of this riff uh, is uh, in 4-4 four, four time, but the second half is in 7-8 time. And essentially what's happening is we're just dropping out an eighth note right at the very end to give it this kind of weird offset feel. So that takes a little bit of time to kind of get the feel for. Uh, there are also, uh, if you're looking at the uh, sheet music, uh, you might see these little dots underneath uh, some of those notes indicating uh, they are to be played staccato, meaning I'm not gonna let them ring out for the entire value of that note. So when I play that third fret of the E string, like that, I am uh, letting the note ring out just enough so that we can hear it and then I release the pressure on my finger uh, so that that note isn't ringing out. So in addition to the specific notes we're playing uh, the, and the rhythm that we are playing, you know, the, the, uh, the length of all of those notes uh, and the space between them, uh, we have these other techniques that kind of help shape the sound or the feel of the song. And uh, they're really cool techniques, not just on an electric ukulele playing, playing Led Zeppelin. Uh, this is stuff that can apply to all sorts of music. We get into the verse riff. I wanted to play the verse riff too, because this is uh, a pretty cool sound. So here uh, we are playing uh, back in 4-4 in four, four time, and we're playing uh, what we call power chords uh, when, we're, when we're playing rock and roll music. So a power chord is uh, also referred to as a fifth, meaning we are playing the first note of a scale and the fifth note of that scale. And when we play those together, kind of have the shell of a chord. Uh, it's not all of the information that we need for what we think of as a, as a major or minor chord, like a major triad or a minor triad, but it is missing what we call the third. So that third tells us if we are major or if we are minor. But if we don't have that, then we kind of just have this uh, heavy sounding bit that's really good for rock and roll, especially when we're moving that shape around a lot and, and playing. You know, those kinds of like heavy rock riffs. Uh, these fifth chords are really, really useful in, in uh, those circumstances especially when we've got a lot of distortion going on, uh, those, those, those riffs sound really cool. So I've got my distortion rolled back a little bit now, but uh, if I give it a little bit more juice, we can hear the, the fuzz. And we've got Purple Haze.
Uh, this is a tricky one. I definitely wanted to do some Jimi Hendrix uh, material uh, because he's a legend. So the intro uh, to the song, uh, we're just playing a B flat note. So I'm playing a B flat on the uh, third fret of the G string, followed by the sixth fret of the E string. And I go back and forth like that uh, for two measures. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And then we kick into the riff that everybody's familiar with. So we heard some of those other techniques that uh, uh, we were using in the ocean, the slide, um, uh, but we've also got a lot of bends happening uh, in here, and that was very, uh, you, you'll hear that a lot in, uh, in uh, Jimi Hendrix's playing. So that first bend comes right there, and uh, it's what we call a quarter bend. We're just bending it a quarter of a step. So. Uh, uh, halfway between here and the next fret. So it's just just enough to give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of color, kind of pulling it out of tune a little bit. Very kind of bluesy feel. And I've got a hammer on here playing seventh of the C, seventh of the G. I play the open E string, and then I play that hammer on to the ninth fret of the G string. And now you'll probably notice that's the same note. There's a lot of bouncing between octaves when uh, Jimmy was playing this on guitar. So he might have been going from like a, a low open E string to, you know, the seventh fret of an A string on, on the guitar. Um, obviously, this doesn't have that same kind of range. So uh, this was an instance where I uh, not only had to kind of uh, find a different place to play some of these notes, but I had to make some creative decisions in order to uh, make the riff work. So I had to flip some notes around. So instead of having a low E followed by a high E, and that would have been, you know, on some, some lower notes, playing that E note lower than I've got right here, maybe starting here and then going an octave lower than that, I don't have the range for that here. Um, so what I was trying to do was trying to come up with uh, a way to get a similar effect. on the ukulele uh, that was giving me, you know, just a, a different take on the same idea. Um, obviously, I'm not Jimi Hendrix, uh, so uh, that was, uh, you know, I just kind of had to settle for something. But I think that sounds pretty neat, playing the open E string and then hammering on from the seventh fret to the ninth fret of the G kind of gives it that little bit of dissonance uh, the chorusing effect of having the same note played across two different strings and letting them ring out together. And when they've got the distortion effect happening, um, we can kind of hear some of those little uh, tiny inconsistencies really bringing out some interesting sounds. Uh, later on in the riff, after I play that whole uh, deal again, I do another little hammer on here hammering from the seventh to the ninth. And playing those two uh, notes, uh, uh, just plucking each of those notes. So it's a hammer on, pluck, pluck. And then I'm doing a full bend. So when I do a full bend, bends get really tricky. So I want to bend this note on this fret up until it's the same pitch as this fret right here. Go find that note, right? Takes practice. It's easy to undershoot or overshoot. If 
finding that right spot. And the reason we do that is because it sounds cool. I could go. That sounds, that sounds okay. I did a slide, so I was getting a similar sound. You know, that could work too. But that just has a much a much more interesting sound. And you know, again, I'm, I'm matching the choices that Jimi Hendrix made um, uh, in, in this interpretation. So I'm trying to, trying to, again, capture that essence. Measure eight, uh, I had to change quite a bit. Um, again, they're the same notes. If you play this lick along with the original recording, the note, it's gonna sound good meshed together, but I had to invert some of the notes, so. So those notes are the same notes that he's playing, but he's playing them flopped around a little bit. I think uh, if I were to, that's what it would be. Uh, but it just didn't sound right playing playing it that high, especially after everything that I'd played. You know, those notes are lower on the guitar and they had a bit more impact, um, whereas, Going from uh, the fourth fret of my C string to the open G, even though the octaves are kind of swapped on that, the, the G should have been the higher note, and in this case, the G is the lower note. Um, it still kind of had that same effect to my ear um, as, as the way that you would play it on guitar. That little bit, uh, is normally done uh, with uh, bends. Probably a bend and a hammer on in there. So bending up and then releasing that bend and doing a hammer on. So the notes uh, without any of those um, articulations would just be the four, uh, fourth fret of the C third of the E, fifth, seven, five. So those are the notes. But what makes it really interesting uh, is, is how we play each of those notes, how we get to those notes. So I don't just play the fourth fret here, I slide in to that fourth fret. So maybe I start on the second fret, or I could start on the third fret, and I slide into the fourth, and then I play. And instead of doing the bends here, uh, I did a slide, and then I could either do a hammer on here, or I could do another slide. Either of those would sound really cool. Before I go into the ending, So I have another little hammer on at the very end there. Again, I've got some slides going on. Sliding into that seventh fret. And I do a hammer on from the fifth to the seventh. Of that A string at the end there. And at the end of the riff, I'm sliding off. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm sliding down into not a specific fret. I just want the effect of that sound of sliding down before I would go into the you know, the Jimi Hendrix chords uh, at the beginning of the song. So I definitely spent some time kind of thinking about how to do this a little bit differently. Um, I encourage you to play around and see uh, how you might play this uh, if you kind of uh, flipped some stuff around. Oh, what if I tried this note over here? And finally, uh, I've got St. Vincent. Uh, Annie Clark is an incredible guitar player, um, and uh, she's just, uh, she's got tons of licks. So, um, this one is from the song Cruel. Um, it's really cool. Uh, uh, it sounds great on the record. Um, watching her play this live as well um, just looks and sounds really, really cool. So, um, I've got it relatively close here uh, for the ukulele. <laughs> I try 
tried playing this riff in a couple of different places. Again, where I'm going from one instrument to another instrument, I couldn't find, uh, you know, I couldn't get the exact voicings uh, that uh, Annie Clark gets when, when she's playing this riff. So I tried it, I've written it out in a couple different places. This is how I played it uh, in the video. Now, when she plays that lick, she is singing at the same time. And if you watch her playing it live, you can see that her hand is staying pretty much in one position. Um, with those extra two strings that you get on a guitar, uh, it's pretty, uh, it's, it's very doable to, to play a, a, a riff like this in one spot without having to move your hand a lot. Um, getting the notes that you want uh, with the uh, timbre that you want to get out of those notes is really tricky. So I found a way to play it in a uh, stationary position without having to slide around a little bit. But where the notes sit, uh, I'm just not quite as happy with. Totally a preference thing. I was I was just feeling it over here. I was vibing there. I wasn't vibing down here. Um, so it's it's interesting the choices that you end up making when you're uh, when you're playing a song or playing a cover or learning how to play a song. Um, whether it's your ear telling you oh, I like the way it sounds over here better than over here. Or you know maybe maybe it's like ah, I'm just not matching their tone. I wanna I want it to sound like them. You know you'll have to find those places like uh, in in Purple Haze where uh, I you know instead of playing my open E string, I was playing the fourth fret of the C string because I just get a, a different sound, again a different timbre, a different quality of the note by playing that in different places. Another thing to think about when you're playing something like this or, or anything um, is the attack. How you hit that string uh, can make a huge impact on the sound. Um, uh, definitely when you're running through effects processing, whether it be distortion or, or delays or reverbs or anything like that, but how hard you hit the strings uh, is going to affect the timbre as well. So right now I'm using a pick because I'm playing some rock and roll stuff. So I've been playing a pick and I can get a, a nice variety. I'll bring the camera down a little bit so you can see my right hand. Uh, so I'm getting a nice variety of tones out of this. I can hit it kind of hard like that or a little bit more softly. And they're very subtle differences, not just the volume, but how those notes project. I can do the same thing with my fingers. We talk a lot about uh, the different parts of your hand that you can use to play those notes when we're playing on, a, on an acoustic ukulele, um, whether I'm using the fleshy parts of my fingers or if I'm using the fingernail. See how bright that is? And how hard I hit those strings also has an impact. Those are all ways that we can control the sound that we're getting out of our instrument. Uh, and it's it's really powerful. It can be a little bit overwhelming. It's like, oh gosh, I don't know what I want this to sound like. I've got so many options. Do I use a pick? Do I not use a pick? What am I supposed to do? Um, but it gives you a lot of control. Uh, you've got a lot of power in your hands to craft the sound that you want to get for whatever song that you're working on. I hope you found that interesting, whether you've got an electric ukulele like this, or uh, if you've got an acoustic instrument like this. Uh, it's, it's really, really fun to play this stuff uh, on, on any ukulele. Again, it's such a versatile instrument. You can do anything you want. But whether this is a style that you want to pursue, uh, or if it's just giving you some ideas, maybe to play some of the uh, other stuff in your repertoire, um, I, I, yeah, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Once again, it's tinyvillagemusic at gmail.com. And I'll see you all in the next video. Did I write an outro? I did not. <laughs>